Hello guys, Assalamu alaikum. My name is Dr. Faraz Ahmed and from today's video we are going to restart our podcast series of the Pleb 1 topics and our today's topic of discussion is orthopedic. So let's start from the first topic and the first topic is responsible nerve root in the lower limb. So please keep in mind in the lower limb there are the six uh, nerve roots. First of all three in the thigh, two in the shin and one in the foot. So let's start from the L1. L1 is supplying the groin and the pelvic girdle. L2 is is supplying the anterior thigh L3 is supplying the medial thigh and the distal anterior thigh and L4 is supplying the medial shin medial shin is supplied by the L4 and the L5 is supplying the dorsum of foot and the outer shin while lateral foot is being supplied by the S1 so next important topic is Cordovaquenia syndrome. This is very very important. So the feature include the sciatica that means lower back pain uh, going to the hips, buttock and the legs. Saddle paresthesia that means the numbness or the loss of sensations in the private areas. It There may be urinary retention, urinary incontinence, fecal incontinence or the constipation as well. So what you have to do, you have to urgently do an MRI and you have to refer to the orthopedics in the case if you are suspecting cordova epania syndrome. So one important thing is that if in the history it is given like, like patient is diagnosed to have the prostate cancer and patient presenting with the lower back pain radiating to the leg and the saddle paresthesia. So what you have to do you have to take you have to take the option of the cordova syndrome because cordova syndrome is very common in the patient having the prostate cancer ongoing. So how you can differentiate cordova syndrome from the disc herniation or the disc prolapse? Please keep in mind both have similar features, almost similar features like lower back pain radiating to you know radiating to the legs and to the uh, foot. And after this, what is the differentiation feature? Differentiation is in the cordova syndrome you will have the saddle paresthesia, urinary and the fecal incontinence or the retention. But in the lower disc herniation and the disc prolapse, these symptoms will not be there. So what you have to do in the disc herniation and the disc prolapse you have to reassure your patient and you have to just give them the analgesia and unfortunately if there are red flags what are the red flags red flags are the same like saddle paresthesia fecal or the urinary incontinence then what you have to do you have to do the MRI so please please keep in mind one important thing is there if there is sciatica like if this is not the disc herniation this is not a disc prolapse if this is sciatica what you have to do you have to prescribe along with the painkiller amitriptyline or the gabapentine or pregabaline as well this is important let me describe what is the difference between cordovaquenia syndrome disc herniation and sciatica so please keep in mind there is no difference in sciatica and prolapse disc or the herniated disc the thing is sciatica can take very short time in getting treatment but if there is herniated disc or the disc prolapse it will take more time in getting the treatment so there is no other treatment oh sorry there is no other difference uh, the other features and the treatment are almost same but keep in mind Along with the painkiller in the sciatica, you have to give amitriptyline or pregabaline as well. So let's discuss few conditions which can affect the pediatrics in the orthopedic as well. So first condition is slipped upper femoral epiphysis. Please keep in mind this condition most of the time affects the children in the second decade of life. What does it mean? It means children from 10 to 20 years of age they will be affected with this slipped upper femoral epiphysis. What happened in these child these epiphysis slipped and what happened then child will be walking with a limping and there will be the shortening of the affected leg and it will be externally there will be pain in the knee hip or the thigh or the groin as well and there will be the limited hip abduction so what you have to do you have to treat these children and most of the time most of the time what you will treat you will do it by surgical intervention so the other condition affecting the kids is developmental dysplasia of the hip. What does it mean? This condition happened in the initial six years of the life. So most of the time these kids are female and they deliver by the breech presentation. There is a positive family history of the similar problem as well. So what will happen with these kids? Like these kids will be walking with the limping when they will start walking. A kid uh, walking with the limping, female and 
delivered by the bridge presentation and family history so what you have to do you have to click on the option of the developmental displays yeah, of the hip so what you have to do for these kids you will do the ultrasound of the hip to make the final diagnosis and then how you will treat these patients you will treat with the pelvic harness okay so please keep in mind but in the older children if the children are old then what you have to do then surgical options are also available for these children so let's repeat slipped upper femoral epiphysis it will be in the males and developmental dysplasia of the hip mostly mostly in the female with the breech presentation and the family history the third disease which is very common in the children as well this disease is called as the Perthes disease and this is common between the age 3 to 6 year of the age please keep in mind the developmental dysplasia of hip is common in the age of less than 6 year and the uh, upper femoral epiphysis sorry slip upper femoral epiphysis is common in the second decade of life and Perthes disease is very common in six to, sorry three to six year of age so what happened in Perthes disease it is basically a vascular necrosis of the femoral head specifically the femoral epiphysis impaired blood supply to the femoral head causes the bone infarction so child will present same with the limping hip pain and the reduced range of the hip movements you will do x-ray and the on x-ray what you will see reduction sorry widening in the joint space flattening and the uh, radiolucency of the proximal metaphysis so how you will do the differential diagnosis if like less than three years as i told you less than six years this will be the developmental dysplasia of the hip as i told you then three to six years this is Perthes disease and in the second decade of life it will be the slipped upper femoral epiphysis so these are the three condition guys very common in the kids and you have to keep in uh, in your mind basically basically the age so another fracture is very common particularly in the army people this is called as the march fracture or the stress fracture of the foot so basically after doing the long march what they will do they will feel the pain in the metatarsal bone and on the x-ray most of the time the fourth metatarsal bone will be fractured so this fracture is called as the stress fracture so another important MCQs is regarding the fracture of the calcaneus like if someone is going to do a jump from very long height and they are going to land vertically or they are going to land longitudinally it can lead to the fracture of the calcaneus. So this point may also come as the MCQs in your exam. Bone pain in the young people that is unrelated to activity. Bone pain unrelated to activity and responding well to NSAIDs you have to keep osteoid osteoma in your mind. So this is another important MCQs like if someone is a player of volleyball, tennis player, badminton player, swimmer, like any activity which involve the overhead use of the muscles, overhead use of your arm and the hand or for example you are moving a house carrying heavy objects, what you will do? You have to keep supraspinatus tendinitis in your mind. What will happen? There will be shoulder weakness, pain especially on raising the arm above the shoulder okay and this will be particularly at night and if some patient is presenting with these complaint and patient is a player of the volleyball tennis badminton swimmer or patient has done the some overhead activity so you have to keep supraspinatus tendinitis in your mind so in elderly people above 70 year old who are on the steroid treatment or who are known to have the osteoporosis if any elderly with the history of fall pain in the hip and leg is shortened and externally rotated you have to keep what fracture of the neck of femur so neck of femur fracture nerve is very very common in the elderly so scaphoid fracture is the commonest fracture in the hand and this could be very serious as well so any young patient having a fall in the outstretched hand and coming with the pain at the base of thumb tender anatomical snuff box pronation followed by the ulnar deviation of the hand is also painful so what you have suspect you have to suspect the scaphoid fracture and what you will do you will do x-ray of the hand but in most of the cases you can't see the fracture of the scaphoid initially on the x-ray so if you are unable to see any fracture on the x-ray so what you have to do you have to apply the cast and you have to say your patient please come back after two weeks and then you will repeat the x-ray in most of the cases you see the scaphoid fracture after two weeks but if you are able to see the fracture in the first instance on the first x-ray then what you will do you will do the scaphoid cast for the six week so please keep in mind if you are going to miss the scaphoid fracture it can lead to the avascular necrosis of the bone 
So let's discuss about the Achilles tendon rupture. Any patient presenting after having pain in the calf. So what patient will tell you? I have heard an audible pop in the ankle. Sudden onset of the significant pain in the calf or the ankle. So patient is coming. What you have to do? You have to do an acute referral to the orthopedic. Uh, you have to do what orthopedic will do. They will do an MRI to confirm. So how you can clinically confirm the Achilles tendon rupture? You can do you can ask patient please lie on the bed in prone position and then what you will do you will gently squeeze the calf muscles of your patient if there is plantar flexion of the foot it means your Achilles tendon is intact but if you are squeezing the calf muscles and there is no plantar flexion it means there is negative plantar flexion and that means Thompson test is positive so Thompson test you have to keep in your mind related to Achilles tendon rupture if Thompson test is positive if there is no plantar flexion there is Achilles tendon rupture you have to do urgent referral to the orthopedic to have MRI so another problem which is very common in the United Kingdom is dopitine contracture. Basically, this is the fibrous connection between the different ligaments of the hand. So what happened? You have to keep few things in your mind. Positive family history, Caucasian origin and phenytoin treatment, alcoholic liver disease and you have to keep the history of trauma in your mind, diabetes and smoking as well. So what is mechanism? Formation of the thick and fibrous tissues within the uh, palmar fascias. So treatment is fasciotomy and you have to keep the dopitine contracture and you, you have to keep the dopitine contracture picture in your mind and the picture like the flexion at the little and the you know ring finger of any of the hand you should keep this picture in your mind because this will come in your mcqs so another important thing you have to keep the difference between osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis in your mind so first of all i am not going to compare them i am going to let you know about the osteoarthritis first and then i will let you know about the rheumatoid arthritis so basically osteoarthritis is a mechanical wear and tear mechanism uh, leading to the uh, disease so what happened there is localized loss of cartilage remodeling of the adjacent bone and associative inflammation so most of the time most of the time these condition osteoarthritis is uh, similar in both genders like incident is incidence is similar so typical affected joints basically you have to keep in your mind large weight bearing joint including hip and knee and then carpo metacarpal joint distal interphalangeal joint and proximal interphalangeal joint as well keep in mind osteoarthritis also affect the carpo metacarpal joint as well so typical history like the monoarthritis monoarthritis you have to keep one thing in your mind monoarthritis most of the time osteoarthritis in effect only one joint any of the joint which i have just explained to you pain after following the use like patient will be okay in the morning and at the end of the day patient will having a lot of pain pain improve with the rest unilateral symptom no systemic upset okay so what you have to keep in your mind x-ray finding you have to keep in your mind l o s s loss you have to keep in your mind so loss of joint space osteophytes subchondral sclerosis and subchondral cyst you have to keep in your mind so if any of the finding in the history any of the finding of the x-ray l o s s are given in your mcqs this means this is osteoarthritis so let's talk about what is rheumatoid arthritis unfortunately this is autoimmune disease this is more common in the female and most of the time it affect the metacarpophalangeal joint and proximal interphalangeal joint so uh, osteoarthritis while a monoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis most of the time involve the more than one joint and when patient will get up in the morning the joint will be very very stiff and painful so sometime patient got up in the morning because of pain in the joint while in osteoarthritis there was no pain patient was relaxed in the morning so what will happen in the rheumatoid arthritis there is morning stiffness which improve with the use so patient will be relaxed at the end of the day and there may be bilateral symptom there may be systemic upset as well in the rheumatoid arthritis so what are the x-ray finding in the rheumatoid arthritis loss of joint space same as the osteoarthritis juxta articular osteoporosis periarticular erosions and the subluxation these four are the finding of x-ray in the rheumatoid arthritis so this difference guys you have to keep in your mind 
so what is the treatment of osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis so please keep in mind exercise physiotherapy will help in rheumatoid arthritis and what happened because in the morning joint will be stiffness in rheumatoid arthritis so in the rheumatoid arthritis you have to click on the exercise and physiotherapy but in osteoarthritis you have to click weight loss and you have to give painkiller like you will start with the paracetamol in the osteoarthritis if it's not helping with the paracetamol you will give the topical NSAIDs if this not helping then you will add the second line drugs that include the oral NSAIDs or the COX-2 inhibitor please keep in mind don't forget to give the omeprazole or any other PPI along with the NSAIDs in the osteoarthritis patient but in rheumatoid arthritis first of all you will click on the exercise and physiotherapy if not helping then what you will do you have to prescribe dmars like what you have to do you have to click on the method tricks it option so let's talk about the fractures in the hand and in the arm so most important fracture is scaphoid fracture which i have already discussed with you people the second fracture is coli's fracture this fracture is also called as the dinner fork deformity and please keep in mind coli's fracture can cause the median nerve injury so what will happen patient normally have fall on the outstretched hand and wait when patient will come like what will happen the fractured segment the distal segment like the hand will be moved dorsally as compared to the upper arm so this fracture is called as the coolis fracture so the other fracture is called as smith fracture which is the reverse coolis fracture like what happened this is also called as the garden spade deformity patient will fall on the flexed hand and the distal part like the hand will move you know ventrally as compared to the uh, arm so this is called as the garden spade deformity or the smith fracture there is another fracture which we called as the barton fracture please keep in mind in both coolis fracture and the smith fracture there will be no involvement of the articular surface but if any of the fracture either coolis fracture fracture or smith fracture it involves the articular surface it is called as the barton fracture and in this fracture you have to involve orthopedic team directly please keep in mind so other type of fracture is in the finger this is called as the mallet finger so mallet finger is basically flexed bend finger what happened during the any game involving the ball if you have hit of the ball at the top of the finger this type of fracture can happen this is not basically bony fracture this is basically the evulsion of the extensor digitorum tendon at the distal interphalangeal joint so next type of injury or the fracture is called as the gamekeeper thumb or the skier's thumb so basically as you know this there is a tenderness over the metacarpophalangeal joint at this point ulnar collateral ligament is going and it is attaching on the metacarpophalangeal joint so what happen if this type of fracture happen there is evulsion of the very minor part of the bone and this type of fracture can lead to a lot of pain and swelling and bruise on the hand then you have to keep the difference of the Montegia fracture and the Glazei fracture in your mind. Like Montegia fracture is basically ulnar fracture. This is fracture of the ulna and dislocation of the head of radius. So proximal one third of the ulna will be fractured in it with the dislocation of the head of radius. This is called as the Montegia fracture. While Glazei fracture is basically the fracture of the distal one third of the radius shaft with the distal radius ulnar joint dislocation this difference is very very important you have to keep in your mind so let me tell you the differences between the lab values in osteoporosis pegged disease and osteomalacia so normally in the osteoporosis osteoporosis everything calcium phosphate and alp will be normal so if alp is raised calcium and phosphate are normal this is pegged disease but if calcium and phosphate are low alp is high this is osteomalacia so normally bone cancer sorry bone metastasis happen from the prostate cancer most commonly in the male and from the breast cancer in the female so if any patient having prostate cancer or the breast cancer are coming to you with the features of the polydipsia polyuria and bone pain so keep in mind polyuria polydipsia are the feature of diabetes as well but along with these feature if patient is having bone pain you have to do the calcium so if <clears throat> there is hypercalcemia and there are other features like confusion constipation and you will do ecg as well and if on the ecg short qt interval so what does it mean this mean that there is this is a case of hypercalcemia
So let's discuss an important tumor which is called as the multiple myeloma. This is basically cancer of plasma cells. There is overgrowth of the plasma cells that replace the bone marrow tissues. So what happened? The main presenting symptoms are bone pain, particularly in the back and the ribs. So as there is replacement of the bone marrow tissues, so what will happen? There will be hypercalcemia and patient will be having features of the hypercalcemia that are polyuria, polydipsia, confusion and constipation. Apart from this patient will have the features of the anemia including fatigue and the weakness so apart from this patient can complain repeated infections renal failure so important investigations which you have to do and which you have to keep in your mind you will do bone marrow biopsy that will show the abundant plasma cells then you will do the urine protein electrophoresis that will show you the benz jones protein this is very important blood film will show you the rolex formation and you will do the x-ray of the skeleton as well that will show you lytic lien Please keep in mind lytic lien are the feature of the multiple myeloma. Apart from this, you will do the blood test, increase calcium with a normal ALP and low hemoglobin, high ESR, impairment in the renal function. These are all the features of the multiple myeloma. So please keep in mind cell type that are found in the bone marrow in multiple myeloma are plasma cells. The diagnostic test for the multiple myeloma is bone marrow biopsy and on the bone marrow biopsy what you will see abundant plasma cells and the likely findings on the blood film are Rolex formation. So after having the femur fracture, what can happen? Absence of the proximal and distal pulses in the lower limb indicate the femoral artery occlusion. Our patient can have the hypotension as well. So what can happen? If there is no pulse, no brachial pulse in the upper limb, there is no radial pulse, what can happen? This could be the supracondylar fracture of the humerus. So let's recall few things from the pediatrics. If a child is presenting with the hip pain, mild fever, white cell in the ESR normal and are mildly elevated, no signs of you know infection like no redness, no tenderness, no swelling, and systemically child is well. This could be the transient synovitis. What could happen in the septic arthritis? Fever more than 38.5, white cell count very high, ESR very high, tenderness, redness, hot, very tender, unwell child, septic arthritis. So again, a boy with limping, short leg externally rotated, and the age slipped upper femoral epiphysis in this category age will be in the second decade 10 to 20 a girl born with breech presentation having family history presenting with limping pain less leg that is shorter than the other so unequal skin fold this condition is common in less than six less than three year of age so developmental dysplasia of the hip so let's discuss about the carpal tunnel syndrome, numbness and tingling of the thumb, index finger, middle finger. So you have to think about the carpal tunnel syndrome. The transverse carpal ligament compresses the median nerve. Carpal tunnel syndrome is related to median nerve. So what you have to do, what is the definitive treatment? Cut the transfer carpal ligament and release the flexor retinaculum. So please keep in mind one of the risk factor of the carpal tunnel syndrome is pregnancy. This could happen in the pregnancy because of the over because of the overall edema of the body tissues. So please keep in mind the tinal sign is not always positive in the carpal tunnel syndrome, but you have to keep this sign in your mind when you will tap at the uh, board, uh, you know at the level of the ligament flexor retinaculum. So what patient will feel? Patient will feel the tingling in the hand. So if patient is feeling the tingling, what what is what does it mean it's mean the tinal test is positive and this is 100% carpal tunnel syndrome so if patient is presenting with a sprain injury this could happen due to the torn ligament is the damage to one or the more ligament in a joint after the trauma or the joint being the taken beyond its functional range due to overstretch so what you have to do you have to keep P R I C E in your mind like you have to advise protection rest icing compress and the elevate the leg this is the important point this could come in your mcqs 
so i have discussed the septic arthritis in the kids so same is the presentation of the septic arthritis in the adults as well what could happen monoarthritis presenting with pain fever swelling and the limited mo movement very tender to touch but risk factor include the diabetes steroid therapy hiv rheumatoid arthritis so suspect septic arthritis so most common bacteria causing the septic arthritis is staph aureus and what you have to do the definitive diagnosis is after aspiration of the synovial fluid and the blood culture so once you are suspecting the septic arthritis start your patient on the flucloxylin for four to six week is the first line if patient is allergic to penicillin then what you have to do you have to give your patient clindamycin so the other topic is reactive arthritis we called as the reiter arthritis as well please keep in mind the reiter's triad this is very important triad reactive arthritis basically happens secondary to the infection patient could have the infection in the abdomen patient could have the infection of the renal system and apart from this patient could have the infection of the eyes as well so after having the infection of eye after having the infection in the kidney patient could develop the knee problem so please keep this triad uh, tri Try it, try it, uh, try it in your mind. Conjunctivitis, urethritis, and arthritis. If patient is presenting with this triad, you have to select what you have to select the reactive arthritis, and symptomatic treatment include analgesia, NSAIDs, and intraarticular steroids. So as I told you previously, if any patient is presenting with the loss of the brachial pulse and loss of the radial pulse after having the fall, you have to suspect the supracondylar fracture of the humerus. And this fracture is very common in the kids from 4 to 10 year of the age after having the fall on the outstretched hand. So please keep in mind this is very very important point regarding your kids. So knee injuries are sometimes very difficult to diagnose and they are complex one but you have to look for the few words in your mcqs you know if there is a term written in your mcqs of locking then you have to think about the meniscal tear like if there is a locking of knee think about the meniscal tear if there is positive apples or positive mcmurray test then think about the uh, meniscal tear again and what you have to do in the meniscal tear you have to request the mri and if patient is telling you that i heard a popping in my knee so please keep in mind anterior cruciate ligament can be ruptured when patient is hearing the uh, popping and if patient develops severe swelling instantly within very short time this is again the anterior cruciate ligament injury and if patient develop hemorthosis in very short time in the knee this is again the anterior cruciate ligament injury and how you have to check the anterior cruciate ligament injury please keep in mind the Lechman test so instant swelling is anterior cruciate ligament and deep uh, and delayed swelling of the knee is meniscal tear so if there is hyperflexion and the anterior direct impact on the knee for example dashboard injury in the car accident you have to suspect the posterior cruciate ligament tear so let's talk about the few injuries related to nerve this can also come in your exam as well so if there is any option of the wrist drop you have to click the option of the radial nerve foot drop happens secondary to common peroneal nerve or the sciatic nerve so claw hand you have to remember the ulnar nerve and the paresthesia of the thumb index finger that is carpal tunnel syndrome you have to remember median nerve in your mind paresthesia of the little finger and the ring finger keep in mind the ulnar nerve so loss of sensation paresthesia of the posterior aspect dorsal aspect of the thumb and the small area between the first and the second finger you have to think about the radial nerve so if there is numbness on the superior aspect of the upper arm like on the deltoid numbness is related to axillary nerve and if you have to suspect the fibular neck fracture this can you know uh, damage the common peroneal nerve again femur neck fracture sciatic nerve acetabular fracture any fracture related to femur is uh, you know going to damage the sciatic nerve so if there is humeral soft fracture sorry sharp fracture keep in mind the radial nerve and if there is fracture of the neck of humerus then it can damage axillary nerve okay so these are the nerve you have to keep these nerve damages in your mind so let's discuss uh, some topic again related to mcqs Patient presenting with osteoarthritis, first line management is paracetamol and topical NSAIDs. If not helping, then you have to give the oral NSAIDs or the COX-2 inhibitor. Please don't forget to give PPI along with this. If T is scored by the DEXA scan 
is minus 2.5 or lower than this you have to keep in your mind the osteoporosis and the treatment of the osteoporosis include uh, bisphosphonate for example alendronate you know uh, residronate or the zolendronate so keep in mind these are the very very important thing child presenting with fever high wc wbc's count esr is raised tenderness hot to touch septic arthritis first line treatment is flu clocks if allergic to penicillin then you have to give clindamycin and unfortunately if the culture results came back uh, for the mrsa you have to give vancomycin so another important thing related to kids is if a kid one to three year old presenting with a severe pain and tenderness of the shin he is unable to stand unable to walk and this happened after having a fall you did x-ray x-ray looks normal so what you have to do you have to suspect the spiral fracture total fracture often not seen on the x-ray so if a kid presenting with the knee pain x-ray looks normal you have to suspect spiral fracture so the other MCQs is a 22 year old male presenting with a complaining of the sudden onset of the severe lower back pain which was elicited when trying to get up. The pain increases in the intensity when lying down and he try to uh, you know raise his legs there is also a tense electric shock like pain so what does it mean so as there is a no history of saddle paresthesia you have to suspect lumbosacral disc herniation or the sacral disc prolapse. Patient presenting with the pain in the shoulder, unable to raise the you know arm above the shoulder and giving the history of the playing volleyball 2-3 days ago, you have to keep the supraspinatus tendinitis in your mind. So guys, I think that's all regarding the orthopedic. If you have any question, you can ask me in the comment box. You can follow me on the Instagram or you can directly Google it. You can follow your books as well. Thank you very much for watching the video and for your support.